Hello subscribers, what's up? It's me, Webs from Slider here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can download images using Async Task. In the past several several videos out there, I was talking about how we can make our download images app first using threads, then using handlers. Here, it's time to take a look at that using Async Task. Now, there are certain things that I need to tell you. I've done all the code for that file download stuff and URL stuff input stream stuff in the previous videos here I'm not gonna repeat it if you guys don't know how to do that please go back in the same playlist and check those videos Android multi-threading examples where I've talked about that in detail so here there's my layout as you guys notice there's an edit text here is download image button over here and then there's the list view. if you go here inside activity underscore main dot XML the code view there what you see is the relative layout at the top and I've given it a background color to make this dumb thing look a little better and of course other than that there's our edit text which has a background, padding, margin, all those stuff that we do for decoration main thing is Android focusable is false which means every time you start the app the keyboard is not gonna come and bother you and then there's the input type is text URI which means only URL type text can be entered by the user and there's the button over here download images its ID giving it a background color a text color then there's the on click attribute here which calls download image method inside your main activity progress bar is here it has a maximum value of 100 and it has a style of progress bar style horizontal which is actually a predefined style inside your Android ADTR over here it's indeterminate no it's false over here take a look at that as well this time I'm gonna make a determinate progress bar in the previous videos I've been showing you indeterminate progress bars out there now there's just a list view again it's a background doesn't matter entries is at the rate array slash URLs now I have already given it the entries over here statically I don't want to create the adapter and do all the other shit because you guys can see that in my list view video on my channel so here you go to the strings.xml there are two string arrays here there is string array of URLs it says image 1 to 7 and then this actual string array itself which has the different URLs out there now out of all this one thing that I need to tell you is the seventh image that you see which says gamersright.com blah 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 it's actually a very huge image it's 14 MB in size and the reason I've done it is I want to show you something with progress bars and what happens with async task as we go further so going back to our main activity I simply pulled our edit text here, the list view here, the button is not there here because I've directly called an on click attribute inside our XML which actually calls this method download image here in Java code. So initialize all of them the same way you do every time, initialize the list of images. Now this time the list of images actually is r.array.image urls which is strings.xml image urls is this list which is actually being initialized here in code and in the list view entries it was this array which was assigned to the list view so going back to main activity set on item click listener no doubts about it click provide let your main activity implement the on item click listener that's gonna have your own item click method here when the user selects an item from the list view just change the contents of your edit text so say selection text dot set text which is list of images of position what happens next is when you have your button clicked that is if you go back to your activity underscore main dot xml here and you click this button download image what's gonna happen is it's gonna check if the selection text is the text null no is the text empty no then based on that what we want to do is start downloading that particular image from that URL in the background thread now again we don't have to worry about threads here because we're gonna make an async task out here so let's get started with so go down here and have our async task so I'm gonna say class my task extends async task over here now async task class requires three parameters params progress result I've talked about this in my earlier video when I explained how the theory of async task how things work put void everywhere for now let's just worry about it later so I'm gonna say void here now there are certain methods that need to be implemented when you're trying to extend async task let's press control one over here add unimplemented methods and actually there's only one method which is do in background now whatever code you write inside this do in background is gonna run in the background thread which is managed for you guys you don't have to create anything other than that there are certain methods for your async task which deal with the life cycle now first let's take a look at this method do in background try to figure out what we are gonna do here 
Now to actually make our task execute, we're gonna go here inside our download image button. Remember, when you click on the button, that's when when you start downloading the image. So you go here and you say my task, my task equals to new my task kind of stuff. And then you say my task dot execute. Now in other words, every time the user clicks the download button, you wanna have a new task object being created and executed. Remember. The same task object cannot be executed more than once. It's going to give you an error and your program will crash. And this is why you're going to make a new object out there. So inside this, the parameters. Now what I want to supply is the URL over here. So I'm going to say string URL. So since this is string URL that I'm supplying here, if you remember, async task has three parameters. Params, progress, result. So params is going to be string here and here in other words it's going to be a string. Now from this string URL I want to download stuff. Now I already have the code for doing all that download work. And before you start actually downloading stuff remember go to your manifest have these two permissions. One is internet the other is write external storage because we are going to save the image on your SD card. So go back to the other main activity which I used in my previous videos. Here I already have the code which is inside this method boolean successful blah 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 just copy paste everything oops I put a string URL here how stupid of me just go there put a semicolon and of course we need to get this URL which is basically your selection text that is your edit text you go down here inside your doing background method just paste the code and remove your return null statement so there's a whole lot of code over here what is going on basically the boolean successful is false URL now in place of URL what you're gonna have is params of zero now remember String params means it basically expects an array over here because of these dot dot dots. But since here at the point above inside your download image method, we said my task dot execute, we only passed one value over here. So that one value is accessible at params of zero over here. So same way, just change this well to params of zero. And inside the finally clause, there seems to be some run on UI thread. Don't need we don't need that anymore. Just remove that. And of course, if you see at the statement where we have returned successful it says cannot convert from boolean to void kind of stuff now my idea was that we download the stuff we initially have boolean successful is false if the download goes good we say successful is true if there is any exception or anything else arises we make successful is false which was the default value over here now for that if you see the in async task there are three parameters that is params progress result now result we have is boolean so I'm gonna put boolean here and that takes care of our error so inside you're doing background the return type is also gonna be boolean here and at the bottom now there is no problem with this now there are certain things that we need to do it's about a progress bar that we have you see our activity underscore main dot xml if we go here inside there's a progress bar which is actually currently visible we have not said anything about making it invisible at all but we gotta do that so before our task starts running in the background what happens is there's a method called on pre execute that gets called inside this method we get to set a progress bar or a progress dialog and do other things so on pre execute is there and after our doing background runs we come back to on post execute which actually runs in the main thread so inside this you get to hide your progress bar or do other things now the super dot statement that you had initially over here you don't need that so inside on pre execute what I'm gonna do is make our progress bar visible now here is the funny problem my class task is actually a separate class and if you see my main activity is actually a separate class the progress bar is inside main activity and I don't have direct access over here so what I'm gonna do is make my task an inner class of your main activity and this is the reason why most of the async tasks that you see online are always inner classes so just cut this put it inside your main activity below this and just reformat everything by saying control shift F so at this point there's my my task now inside on pre execute I can directly say download images progress which is my progress bar dot set visible I can make it view dot visible here after my image has successfully downloaded I can say so this is the kind of logic I have now you guys are probably saying what the hell man the progress bar is visible here in activity underscore main all the time so we don't want that we want the progress bar to be visible only when the person starts downloading the image so I'm gonna make this visibility hidden over here by saying visibility is gone over here I'll go back to our main activity dot Java if you remember very well we are using a determinate progress bar to show the progress so where have we calculated that in fact nowhere so let's make some variables here 
Now first thing that we need is the total length of the image file that we are trying to download so that we can calculate the percentage of it being downloaded. Now that can be obtained by your connection object by saying connection dot get content length. There is this method that gives content length. Now remember this may return a minus one in some cases but in our case that is while downloading images it perfectly gives you the size. So get content length. Now we need to store this inside some variable. So I'm going to create that variable right inside my task. I'm going to call that private end content length over here. So I have initialized it to minus one just in case things go bad. So here I'm going to put that by saying content length. So when you run to in background you get the con connections content length and that result is stored inside your content length variable. Now other than that we also need to do one more thing. We need to count exactly how many bytes have been read. Now if you remember inside our while loop is where all the action takes place. Now input stream dot read buffer is gonna read this many characters which is read many characters as long as it's not minus one. So it can be like first it reads 124 characters then it reads 1000 characters then it reads 500 characters 600 and so on. So each time we need to add this to some other variable to get the total number of characters that have been read so far. So for that I'm gonna make another variable here. I'm gonna say private int counter over here. So what I'm gonna do inside the while loop is I'm gonna increment your counter by saying counter equals to counter plus red. In other words 0 equals 0 plus 539 plus 1024 plus 800 till this while loop runs. Now each time what I wanna do is I wanna update the progress bar with these two values. Now we have the total number of bytes that are currently read and we also have the total number of bytes inside the image that is the size of the image. Now we want to display a progress bar based on that. So I'm going to say publish progress here if you guys remember. You call publish progress. You supply the value that you want to update your progress bar with and that's going to be counter in our case. Publish progress is giving an error right now because if you remember in our async task there were three parameters. The first was those things that you require to run your background task. The third thing was what your background task is going to return after it runs successfully or unsuccessfully. The second parameter is how or what value should represent your updates. In our case we need an integer value that will represent our progress updates. In other words it's going to be one person, two person, three person and so on. So that's integer value. So here say publish progress counter. Now publish progress will actually call another method in your async task which I have again discussed in my theory videos. If you go down here, there's a method that we need to write which is called on progress update. And as you guys see, it gives us many integer values. But here, where I've called publish progress, I've just supplied one integer value counter, which is the current number of bytes that have been read. So we want to ac actually access values of zero for all the meaningful information that we have. So remove this. Now what I want to do is calculate some percentage. Now let me actually show you what is going on. At this point you guys are like oh my god dude what are you writing. So let me actually have a log statement here to show you exi exactly what this counter value contains over here. There's a special file I have called l.java. It's nothing but a log.d message inside st public static void m. So I'm gonna use that method l.m over here. So I'm gonna go down here and say l.m. There are two values I'm gonna so at this point just save this over here and you see everything looks perfect pre-execute the on options item selected is good oops then just the on item click download image that's where the task is getting executed so we are good to go let's just run this and see how this looks so at this point as you guys notice my app is up and running let me select image 7 here and as you guys notice on item click directly sets the edit text with a particular URL if you want I can just browse you and show you the complete URL here which is .jpg now when I click download image over here what's gonna happen as you guys notice the counter value and the total length value is going haywire inside your log cat do you guys observe that now using these two values you want to calculate the percentage of the file downloaded which is easily calculatable right you can just divide counter by total length into 100 that's gonna give you the ratio or the percentage of the file that was downloaded here take a look at this oh my god now since it's a large image it's still going on like crazy well I should have taken a smaller image just to show you guys how things work what we want to do now is calculate our progress so I'm gonna have inside my on progress update method if you remember values of 0 is actually your counter which was called using publish progress so I can say values of 0 here 
and divided by content length is gonna be the total length of the file so this is gonna give me the ratio now unfortunately both are integers so dividing them this way is gonna give you zero so what you're gonna do is make one of them double so once this is double take the whole expression in multiply that by 100 put another brackets around both of them make the whole thing integer because progress bar work with integers right and we want to store this inside some variable now remember publish progress is getting called so many times which means on progress update is getting called so many times so declaring a variable here is not such a good choice so what we go above here we say private int calculated progress call it zero here and we go down here and we put our calculated progress equals to that amount that we just calculate put a semicolon at the end now what we want to do is update our progress bar by simply saying download images progress dot set progress calculated progress and that's all we need to do so at this point if we go and run again what should happen and we can remove this log statement it's very annoying it probably printed 1 million log messages look at that holy cow that's a huge number of messages over here so let me remove that it will actually make our app very fast so removing it by commenting it out let's run this again check out this so at this point as you see our app is back again let me select the same image 7 here to show you a clear progress bar the URL is there click download image and as you guys notice the progress bar starts updating very slowly like I said it's a massive image some 20 30 MB or something and unfortunately unlike you guys I'm running on a 2G internet so that's the speed I get so now the problem with this approach is everything looks great yeah it looks amazing but now if you rotate the screen boom the progress bar disappears oh my god now if you rotate back there is no sign of the progress bar but let me tell you something the image is still getting downloaded in the background and I can show you that if you go here to our file manager so if you see here this 8.11 MB image was the one we were downloading it's actually Halo 4 game over here and this was massive image I purposely took it out now the problem is the image was downloaded but the user has no idea this happened because the progress bar just vanished from the eyesight so how do you make an async task that can survive the progress bar and first of all why did it disappear you see when you when you rotate your screen your activity gets destroyed which means your async task over here if you guys notice your async task calls publish progress right and then what you have is your on progress update where you say progress bar dot set progress calculated progress everything works fine but guess what here at the top when your activity gets destroyed a new object gets created a new progress bar is initialized a new progress bar is assigned over here from XML and that means the old progress bar is getting all the updates over here by download images or set progress and set visibility while your new progress bar at the top is still invisible because in XML if you guys remember we have set the visibility equals to gone so how can we tackle this problem if you guys have definitely seen this problem before there's thousands of forums where they talk about this in detail there are some shitty solutions like one person saying call get last non-configuration instance which is deprecated the other person saying do not change the orientation of the activity keep it fixed but I will talk about this in a very unique way in the next video to explain how to create an async task that survives the rotation of the activity. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you see, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.